In this tutorial, I'm going to teach you how to make black and white prints on an Epson printer using Epson's advanced black and white mode. The advanced black and white mode is a huge advancement in black and white printing on inkjet printers because in the past if you had a black and white image and you sent it to a color inkjet printer, uh, it would give you a black and white image but it wouldn't necessarily be a good black and white image. Um, typically the prints would not be neutral gray. They might have a color cast imparted to them. And the color cast, even worse than that, often wasn't consistent in what color it was from the light tones down to the mid tones and into the dark tones. When you're doing a black and white print, you either want it to be perfectly neutral gray through the entire total range, or if you want to have a, a toned image, like a say a sepia tone or a warm tone image, you want that color cast that's imparted to the picture to be consistent through the full tonal range. And Inkjet printers simply aren't capable of delivering that using the regular color mode. So Epson has the advanced black and white mode. And this is um, this not only gives you the capability of making a perfectly neutral black and white print with really beautiful tonality, it also lets you choose from several different color toning options. And if we look at the uh, if we look at these example pictures here, this one's a neutral tone one. This is perfectly neutral gray, no color cast to it at all. Um, you can see how that looks. And then the next option that you have is cool tone. And a cool tone is like a kind of a slight bluish tone imparted to the picture. If you've done black and white printing in the dark room, uh, it used to be common for people to take a black and white picture and then uh, put it through something called selenium toner, which was a chemical that gave it a very slight cool cast to it like that. And so the cool, the cool tone mode in the, in the Epson driver gives you something that's, that resembles like a, a selenium tone print. The next option that you have is warm tone. And this looks a lot like the old warm tone papers that used to be sold for, for printing in the dark room. It's got, a slight, it's got a slight warm tone to it. It's not, very, it's not real strong or extreme like a sepia tone, but it's a, it's a nice subtle warm tone. This is one that I use quite a lot for my own black and white prints. And then last, you have the choice of a sepia tone, which is a much stronger, warmer tone, which some people like if they want to have a picture, give it like an old-fashioned, you know, sepia tone sort of look. This is what you would choose. So those four tone possibilities, neutral, cool, warm, and sepia, are actually built into the Epson Advanced Black and White mode so that you can choose them and the system will automatically give you the correct tonality um, from those choices. So let's go back here to the example image, and I'll show you how it's actually done. Uh, to make a print, of course, in Photoshop, you go to the File menu, choose Print, and this gives you the Photoshop print dialog box. Um, first thing you need to do is choose the printer you're going to use. If you have more than one printer, then you need to you know, pull down this menu and choose the right one. Um, choose the layout, which should be horizontal or vertical, depending on your picture. You see over here there's this, uh, this uh, preview. The preview picture may not look good right now because it may be that the image looks way too big or way too small in the preview. The reason for that would be that you don't have the paper size set to the, to the correct size paper for the image you're printing. And that's something that's done in the Epson driver, so we'll get to that in a few minutes and show you how to do that. So for right now, if the preview image doesn't look correctly sized, don't worry about that. We'll fix that in a minute. Um, next thing we go down to is color management. What you want to choose here, and there's two choices, either Photoshop manages colors or printer manages colors. Um, Photoshop manages colors is for color printing using ICC profiles, and I have a separate tutorial on how to do that, but we don't use that for the black and white mode. It has to be set to printer manages colors for this. Um, you see the printer profile here is grayed out. You can't choose that because that's not needed for what we're doing here. The next thing here is send 16-bit data. Um, if you have an image that's a 16-bit image, go ahead and click that. If it's an 8-bit image that you're printing, this should be grayed out, so it won't be an option. Down below, we have normal printing. Choose that. Rendering intent. This is something that's also not relevant to what we're doing here. This is for use with ICC profiles, so it really doesn't matter what you have this set at. Um, just leave it at whatever, whatever the default is. Uh, black point compensation is grayed out too because that's something that's also used only for ICC profile printing for color printing. Now the next thing we need to do is go to the Epson driver itself and that's where the settings for the advanced black and white mode are. And you access that by clicking print settings here. And this brings up the Epson driver. 
Um, now this video is actually a a redo of an earlier tutorial that I made on using the Epson Advanced Black and White mode. And the reason I'm redoing it now is because the printer driver has changed. The, uh, the controls and the settings are still the same as they were before, but the layout of the driver and the locations of the, of the different settings are different now. So this is using, this is done on a Mac using um, the latest Mac operating system, the Ventura operating system, with the latest Epson driver. So up here again we see choose the printer. That should be the same as you chose in the Photoshop dialog box. Um, paper size. This is your, where you set your paper size. Um, if the paper size, um, if the preview image back here didn't look right, then that's because the paper size was off. So you choose what paper size you're going to do. And I'm choosing US letter, which is 8.5 by 11, because that's what this is sized for. Um, next thing we go down to is printer options. Um, first check color matching. This needs to be set to Epson color controls, not color sync. So make sure it says Epson color controls. If you're doing this on a Windows computer, the option would, the option would be ICM or, or Epson color controls. And it, on that, it's the same thing. You want the Epson, the Epson controls. Click OK. Then go to printer setting. Now this is where the important stuff's at. Um, first thing you do is choose the paper source. Um, many printers have the choice of either the regular sheet feeder where you put in a stack of paper up the top of the printer, or um, some of them like the Epson PA-800 that I'm using have an option of um, sticking in real thick papers like a lot of fine art papers are through a separate slot. And that's what we're doing here. We're going to choose front fine art. And the reason I'm choosing that is because the paper that I'm going to use is, is one of those thick art papers. If you were printing on a thinner paper, then you would choose the sheet feeder, and that'd be fine. Um, next is um, media type. Now, the Epson driver has listings of all these different papers that are made by Epson. Um, they do not have any papers made by other companies listed in here. So if you're using a paper that's made by another manufacturer, like, uh, like Hanamule or, or, or Ilford or whatever, um, what you're going to want to do is look at the instructions for the paper you've got. The manufacturer of the paper should have an information sheet either included with the paper or on their website that gives you a list of printer driver settings to use for that paper. It, basically they will tell you which of the Epson papers you should choose in the Epson driver to make their paper look right. And I'm using um, Ilford's uh, gold, uh, gold fiber gloss paper. Well, Ilford recommends for that that you use the uh, premium photo paper glossy setting. So that's what I'm going to choose here. The uh, next thing we'd look at is ink type. Um, this is set to photo black, and you can't change that because the Epson P800 driver automatically chooses the correct black ink to use depending on which paper that you're using. So if you're using a matte paper, it'll, it'll choose matte ink. If you're using a glossy paper or a semi-gloss or, or a pearl surface, any of those kind of shiny sort of papers, it will choose the photo black for you automatically. Okay, print mode down below here is um, got two choices. You got Epson Precision Dot or Advanced Black and White Photo. The Precision Dot setting is for color printing. We're going to choose Advanced Black and White Photo. Um, color toning, we'll leave this alone for right now because we're going to go into the advanced color settings for that. So let's go on up here. Um, you have the color toning choices that I showed you earlier. Neutral, cool, warm, and sepia. So let's say we want to do this as a warm tone. We'll choose that. Now, if you look over here, you see this kind of a, a color picker sort of thing. The very center of it represents a perfectly neutral color. And then the little cross here shows you the color that the system is actually going to use. And you'll see that if we change to different ones, see the cross moves down here for the cool tone. For neutral, it goes back to the center. You can actually manually select a color here instead of using one of the four presets, although I find it's pretty difficult to to choose correctly on this because of the way this is set up. And the built-in settings are very good. They, they look just like uh, black and white darkroom prints would be when either printed as a neutral picture or, or a paper that's been run through a toner chemical. So we'll go back here and choose warm once again. Now these settings here for brightness, contrast, tonality, don't mess with any of that stuff. Just leave those at at their defaults. Um, the next thing we look here is tone. And these are basically how how dark do you want the picture to be. If you're using an Epson paper, 
Um, the default, strangely enough, is the dark setting. Not normal, but the dark setting is the, is the normal default setting that this comes with. And I have found that, generally speaking, the, the pictures, if you choose the normal mode, will be too light. The prints will come out too light. And this is even if you have a perfectly calibrated monitor and everything, which I do. For some reason, the Epson driver just prints them too light if you choose the normal mode. And that's probably why they have the dark mode set as the default. Um, if you're using an Epson paper, the dark setting should work fine. If you're using a third-party setting, um, it may not. Um, so you'll have to test and see. With the Ilford paper that I use, I usually get the best results with the darker setting. Setting it to that tone gives prints that match my monitor using the Ilford paper. Which is kind of strange because if I'm doing color printing on that same paper, I don't have to mess around with it like that. Just the normal, the normal settings work. But for black and white, you have to choose the darker tone. Highlight point shift is something you should leave off. Um, I believe that what this does, and I haven't tested this, um, I'm just going by what I'd read in the instruction manual several years ago, but I, I believe that what this does is it tries to change the, uh, um, it tries to change the highlights tones based on what the, uh, the color of the paper base is, and it really doesn't work out well. You're better off just leaving this off. So now that we've got all this set, we can hit OK, and we need to go back to paper settings again because I did forget something. Let's go back here to basic again. And you'll see that we've got um, all this stuff has stayed the same as it was that we just set. Um, color toning is going to say fine adjustment anytime you have chosen something that's different than, than the, the neutral setting and the dark setting. If you change the, uh, the lightness setting to a different one or if you change the color, it's going to change this to say fine adjustment. And that's fine. We can leave that as, as it is. Um, out output resolution. You have two choices. You've got, and these choices will vary if you have a different printer model that I'm using. But on the Epson P800, you have choice of super fine, which is 1440 DPI, or super photo 2880 DPI. On the paper I'm using, I've never seen a difference in image quality between the two, so I choose the 1440. The higher resolution setting um, has a disadvantage of making the prints take a lot longer to finish. And it uses a little bit more rank too. Uh, now, whether my choice is the correct choice or not for you will depend on the paper that you're using. On some papers, you may be able to see the dots from the 1440 setting, and you might want to use the finer resolution mode. So test this with your own paper and see what you think about it. Um, I'm using the super fine 1440 mode, though, because as I said, the Ilford paper that I use, I've never been able to see a difference when I've done comparisons. Um, next, we have um, high speed. Um, I, I always unclick that. Um, the reason is because it gives a little bit more drying time between each pass of the print head over the paper, which I think is better so that the paper is is further along and drying before it starts passing through the rollers that, that draw the paper through. Uh, finest detail should be set. Uh, mirror image should be unchecked because that's going to flip the image uh, over so that it's like a mirror image. You don't want that. Okay, now we got, got all that set, we hit OK. Next thing we want to look at, now if you're printing with roll paper, there may be stuff in here you need to change. But I'm using sheet paper, so ignore that. We need to look at advanced media control. These things here, ignore all those. Leave those at default, don't mess with them. Um, the one thing that we do need to look at here is plate and gap. And what this is, this, show, this lets you choose how high above the paper that the print heads pass. With some thick papers, the print heads can actually strike the surface of the paper and tear up the paper and, and mess up the print. So you don't want that if you're using a real thick art paper. Um, so if, for the Ilford paper I'm using, it's one of those thick papers. So for that, I would choose the wide plate and gap. If you're using a thinner paper, the normal one is fine. Hit OK. And that's all the stuff we need to set in the driver, so we'll hit Save. And once that's set, then we're all ready to go. Hit print and wait for your print to come out and see how it looks.